there's a number of different, um, let's call them core principles and, and then practices. Hmm. And it's not a short list. Hmm. Um, I think a lot of people, you see, you see this in blogs and, and videos. There's people who are like, well, oh, there's three things to stoicism or there's five things to stoicism. Yeah. And it's really, you know, if we go by the people who, who originally um, talk about it, like say Seneca, um, Seneca in one of his letters actually says that, look, stoicism is this complex system mm. and you're asking, he's talking to Lucilius, this, this friend of his, who's essentially asking him for sound bites. Mm -hmm. And Lucilius, he says, listen, I can't give you any of that because and he, here he says something that's a little bit far fetched. He says, it, you know, stoic writings are so filled with so many great ideas that I can't single any of them out, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which uh, you know, some Stoic texts are, are pretty good that way. Maybe maybe not all the time, including mm. Seneca himself. But there is something to that, this this notion that it's it's like a, a fabric or a network or, if you like, a different um, metaphor, a constellation, mm. right? Um, if, you, if you're looking at, at the Big Dipper, if you only saw three of the stars, you couldn't really identify it as the, the constellation that it is. Mm. And it's... I don't say this in order to make anybody feel bad, you know, or, or worried or anything like, oh, now I don't understand what stoicism is because I don't know 20 different things. It's it's more to say um, there's always a lot more to, to study, and the, the classic place to go is, of course, the texts of um, mm. the big three, Seneca, um, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius and then you know as one goes on you also want to dig into the the other people that we were fortunate to have like mm. Cicero who's not a stoic himself but knows an awful lot about stoicism or uh, Arius Didymus uh, who gave us an epitome of stoic ethics mm. so all, all of these things are, are important and then you know there there are modern Stoics who I think are particularly helpful um, in in laying this kind of stuff out. Some of them mm. are quite difficult to read, like um, you know Becker's A New Stoicism. I don't know if you've ever tried to crack. You, you that know up. what? I I haven't actually read that yet, but I've booked him on for the show, so I'm very excited to to well, have a conversation with him. Becker, I, I don't. I think we might be talking about somebody different. Oh, Becker, we're talking about Becker something different. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about something completely no, no, was... different. A new stoicism. Who am I thinking of then? Okay, so thinking of someone completely different then. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, Becker wrote this really, really great book but it's incredibly dense <laughs> so yeah okay yep. it, uh, i worked i worked through it with a client and it took us about four months of weekly meetings to get through the the entire thing but it's yeah, you wow. know it's it's worth it's worth looking into and then there's much more accessible authors like you mentioned you know we're talking before the show like massimo um his uh uh, how to be a stoic really good mm, book yeah. i think you know it puts puts the reader in conversation with epictetus drawing mm. on on bits and pieces of that um so it, all of this is just preamble to saying there's there's quite a few different um principles and practices and as you put them together you you get more out of them they mm. they don't they don't uh provide you with everything on their own yeah. And so so the more that you're doing, the other thing I would say, too, is stoicism, like any philosophy of life, there's there's the theoretical side to it where you're, you know, or, or cognitive where you're learning something. And then there's the practical side where you're actually doing something. And the, mm. and the more that you practice, the more you, you see w what these guys are actually talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or I shouldn't say guys because there's there's some plenty of really great uh, women uh, authors on on stoicism in recent times as well, like Margaret mm. Graver, you know, uh, prime example who we we had at Stoicon several years ago, especially mm. on on emotions, but on a number of other things, Julia Annas, and and quite a few mm. others. So let's should we just jump into? Yeah, the, and uh, I just want to mention ideas? one thing. I, I mean you. Right at the start there, you confirmed something that I was thinking about yesterday. And as I was preparing for this interview, I was kind of thinking, okay, well, what are the core principles of Stoicism? And then, you know, if it, it, and, it, you know, even myself, I like to kind of, you know, I'll, I'll just quickly Google, okay, core principles of Stoicism, right? Let's yeah. take a look at what everybody else says, right? And, you know, some people have a list of 10, some people have a list of three, some people have a list of 20. And, yeah. and you perfectly described it at the start. It's like there's the core principles, but then there's also the core practices 
but they yeah. all kind of intermingle. Um, and that's what I was thinking last night. I was like, wait, are there even any like core principles or is it just a bunch of tools and tactics like Tim Ferriss would describe to help us to, you know, like have a little bit of a more of effective life. Yeah. Um, and, there are, and, there are definitely yeah. principles. And, yeah, and I, so, I think that the, I think that the approach that tries to reduce it just to the practical is, is fundamentally mistaken. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, so maybe and, we could and, start and, with the core principles then. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I, I want to say this too, that, that, that realization is not something new. The ancient mm. Stoics knew about that as well. Mm. So you, like you see Epictetus, uh, there's a guy in his, his class who doesn't want to study logic, uh, you know, theory of argumentation, and he says, well, okay, whatever you want to do, buddy, and uh, let's just stick with the practical stuff. Mm. Now, somebody comes to you and says, you should do this or that, how are you going to know whether they're, you know, he doesn't say this, but he's something close to it. How do you know that they're not full of crap? Mm. You know, yeah. you don't have the techniques to to be able to to analyze what they're they're saying. So the the, the cognitive side is is really important. So um, could you say I, that I, that's more of a a a practice in? Because uh, I've often ah, thought yeah, you're that, onto something there. Yeah, I, I've, I've often I've often thought that stoicism is not necessarily just a. It's essentially a way of thinking. Right. So yes, that, yeah, that's part it, of it. it teaches us how to think. And then through teaching us how to think, we naturally come to the conclusions that a lot of the Stoics came to, which is, you know, control the things that you can't yeah. control, forget about it. You know, like there's a very lot. And that's why it stands out to people as something that is very natural. Like a lot of people say of Stoicism that, well, it just made sense to me. You know, it's because it's well, very part, logically part, based. They, they say that until they, they read more of the texts. <laughs> <And then laughs> like, what the hell is this crap over here? Yeah, and then, and yeah. then you go, it's sort of like your learning goes through plateaus, right? Yeah. 